it's been one of those mornings actually one of those weeks, you know, but today I'm excited because it's sh not Shadow and Shmoo's time. It is Speed Reviews time. This is where I update on a bunch of different products that I've been testing that maybe I mentioned in past videos or I haven't mentioned at all, but I'm giving you quick like mini reviews on a ton of different products. I find these videos to be some of the most useful because maybe I mentioned a product once in a video, did a first impression on it, and now I'm giving you like my final wrap up kind of thoughts as I've tested it more. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I have a whole speed reviews playlist down below in the description box if you want to watch more of these. My highlight today is real intense. We'll get into that. But just so you know, I am aware it is like, whoa, I've got a crap ton of makeup, okay? Before we jump into that, I did want to thank Necessary for sponsoring a portion of today's video. The last couple of months, I've been trying out a bunch of their skincare, body care, and these are the ones that I'm like, whoa man okay one of the things i love about necessaire is that they adhere to the eu standards so that basically just means much better ingredients i actually had some extras and i gave them to my aunt here and she recently texted me <laughs> this was just her i didn't prompt her to do this that is like a lot coming from her because she is a skincare queen okay they use clinically proven concentrations of active ingredients so that the products that you're using are actually effective yes their packaging is to die for <laughs> like their packaging is so beautiful sitting on your counter sitting in your shower but they're actually certified climate neutral certified plastic neutral and they donate one percent to nonprofits. so two of my absolute favorites can be found in their treatment collection you get these two plus their body lotion okay let me start off with the next serum. This is like beautiful glass packaging. This has five different peptides, niacinamides, and rose water. The formula of this is like this super nice lightweight. It almost feels like velvety to me once it dries down. I love that it doesn't feel sticky. It's not like too heavy and it absorbs in nicely. It tightens and firms. This I feel like has been helping. I feel like my neck has been looking like a little bit smoother. I've been putting this on at nighttime if I don't have self tanner on. And if I do have self tanner on, then I'll put it in the morning and just like let it absorb throughout the day. But I'm really trying to start focusing on my neck because just with aging, you know, and to me, this one feels like, like a luxurious kind of product. So it's just, it's motivating for me to put on. If you have sensitive skin, Necessaire is a good brand to try because no silicones, no parabens, fragrance-free, dermatologist tested. My other favorite product, which is also in the treatment collection. So you can get the three for like a bundle price. And then I also have a discount code that you can stack on top of the bundle. You can use it on any of the products on their site, but it's WIN10 and that'll give you 10% off your whole order. So you can do the bundle products, just single products. The link down below will take you to my page with like my recommendations on there, but the code WIN10 will work across their entire website. But the body serum is my other favorite from them. This has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and ceramides. Basically like a lightweight gel. I feel like this really helps extend the wear of my self tanner because it is just keeping my skin super moisturized. So whether you wear tanner or not, this just absorbs in really Really nicely if you're someone who doesn't like that like really tacky feel of a lotion you don't even notice it on after you put it on it has that nice like silky feel as well like the next serum if you have eczema or dryness or your skin is just really sensitive or just like crepiness which i feel like is what i'm starting to get on my body this product is made to specifically help target those things both of these are fragrance free and actually all of necessary's products come in fragrance free options so some of their products do have fragrance like the body wash i have love this as well this is the eucalyptus body wash you guys oh my god the scent of this it's eucalyptus but it's not like artificial it smells like a true spa i just feel like i'm in a spa when i use this and the twist cap oh my god my favorite because you don't have to deal with like loose caps in the shower you know also comes in fragrance free all these are also vegan and cruelty free by the way like i said you can purchase these on their own but you get a much better deal if you do it in the bundle in the bundle the treatment collection also comes with the body lotion as well this one is fragrance free also has niacinamides peptides and plant oils definitely gonna be pumping these guys into some travel containers to take with me because i just feel like they've been doing great things for my skin and now it's part of my routine again the code win 10 will give you 10 percent off your entire order and everything is down below. All right, so I'm gonna actually start off with a foundation. So I am gonna have a foundation Friday. <laughs> I haven't said those words in so long. A foundation Friday coming, updating on a bunch of tinted moisturizers. So any tinted moisturizers I've been trying, I'm leaving out of the speed reviews, but I feel like this one is more of a foundation. It's a L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. So this is a new product from L'Oreal. I have the shade 20 Light, but this is definitely like a tanner shade for me. So this foundation I would say is light to medium coverage. It does feel like a tinted balm. It's very serum. 
from like super glowy, super lightweight. The way that I like to use this is I do like to use it with like a full face of makeup on, but especially if I just want to throw something on quick to where I want my skin to look really healthy and glowy, but I'm just like going to run errands. For me, this is not like a you know, all day wear, long lasting foundation it is going to transfer. It's not like a super long wear foundation. I just like to dip my brush, my foundation brush, like straight in here and then apply. So it's just really quick. I would just view it as like a tinted serum. Okay, next up I have this little hair oil. This was actually a sample from Sephora. It's the JVN Complete Nourishing Shine Drops. So this is, I guess, more of like shine drops rather than oil technically which they are. They make your hair so shiny. I actually waited to put it in so you can see it right now, but I've just been putting in like a very small amount. You need literally two drops for like my whole head. They're dry, so it doesn't make my hair like oily looking. It smells really good. It smells like the salon. It's always hard to see on dark hair. Like when I show hair things, it's hard to tell. I just turned up the ISO like pretty bright, so hopefully you can see better, but just makes your hair look really shiny, really healthy. I think this is gonna last me literally like a year because you do need such a small amount. All right, a foundation product, tinted moisturizer. This is like a one of the tinted moisturizers, but I'm including it because this was a major, major fail for me. This is the Ilia Sea Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40 Sunscreens. I got the shade Tone One, like the packaging. Cool packaging, interesting, different kind of, you know, pump here. This actually pumps out. So it looks like it's gonna be, you know, like it says, a tinted serum sunscreen. There it is. When it blends out, you literally can't notice anything, like no tint. It looks like nothing was applied to my face. To me, it has like a dry feel to it. When it absorbs in and feel this like flakiness, I don't like the feel of this and the tint is literally not there. To me, this just seems like total waste of money. I'd way rather just put on an SPF that I like the formula of. I tried these in a first impressions video recently. It's the new Rose Ink Cream Bronzer. Since I tried these in that video, this is one that I have not wanted, wait, have not wanted to put down? Yeah, I'm having such a hard time. <laughs> I've said this sentence five times and it sounds wrong. The double negatives screw me up sometimes. I've been wanting to use this every time I do my makeup. There we go. One thing I'll say is cute packaging, but I friggin' hate this screw top. I don't know, I just wish they made it like flip up. Small details because the formula of this cream bronzer is so beautiful, it's very unique. If you like more of a dry cream, you will love this. Like if you don't like feeling the tackiness or like having to set your cream bronzer, this is a very unique, like super lightweight, airy feeling cream bronzer where once you blend it out, it just like dries down and you don't even notice it on your face. I like that it doesn't pick up my foundation underneath. In that first impressions video, I swatched all of these next to each other. So you can go check that out if you wanna see the swatches. This is the Say Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow. So basically this is a liquid highlighter that you can use all over your face. You can use that as a highlighter, you could mix it in. I feel like because the bottle is so big, it's kind of intended to be mixed in with like foundation, with SPFs, whatever. That's the way I like it best. I like just mixing in a pump with any other product that you're putting on your face. Today I did apply it as a liquid highlighter on top of another, <laughs> the powder highlighter actually that I already had on my face. We'll get into what happened today on my face. But as you can see, I mean, my highlight is really popping. So it is really pretty. I do like this as a liquid highlighter on its own as well. So I like that this one has multiple uses for me. There's no glitter in it. It's just like really pretty sheen. It's not too thick. It's a nice lightweight. It just kind of feels like a serum. You know what? I haven't tried using this as a body glow, but I bet it would be really nice because it does have that just like sheen wet look to it. Okay, let me get into the beginning of where my makeup went downhill today. So this is a new product for Maybelline. It's the Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Instant Age Rewinder Whipped Matte Makeup. It says Primer Concealer Powder BB Cream. <laughs> I have the shade zero two light medium. It's too dark. It works with tanner, but today like it was definitely too dark. So the way that I've been trying this is just on its own, not necessarily under foundation, just like if I'm going on a walk and I wanna add a little bit on top of my SPF, throwing this on just to see what happens. I agree with the whipped claim, the whipped matte. It is whipped, it is matte. Immediately when I put this on, it reminded me of one of my favorite products ever. It's the number seven. I'll put it in here. I use that as a primer because it mattifies and blurs. I have like a TikTok on it if you wanna see what it looks like being applied. That reminds me of what this is like trying to go for. 
but I would 100 million percent go with the number seven over this. So the number seven you can use on its own or under makeup and it works beautifully for both. It just looks pretty patchy to me and I've noticed that every time I've applied it, not just today. It just looks patchy. It's like hard to get an even kind of color with this. It is mattifying, definitely gives your face like that matte finish, but it's not nearly as blurring as the number seven one. And underneath foundation, because I wanted to show you as many products as possible being applied, uh, would not recommend. I had some major issues with my foundation, with my powder products today. I mean, I layered like so many things because I was just trying to get to a solid point, you know, where it looked presentable. Definitely don't agree with the primer claim or concealer claim. This does not have enough coverage at all to be considered concealer. Just pass on this, get the number seven one. That's one of my favorite products. On top of that today, I use the new Tula Tinted SPF, which I've been really liking. Again, that's coming in the tinted moisturizer video, but spoiler alert, I do really like that one applied with a sponge. So I was thinking that was gonna be like, you know, a good product to put on top of this. It was, it, it worked okay, but still like the patchiness of this came through underneath. So then I applied like a powder foundation on parts of my face, a whole smorgasbord, smorgasbord, smorgasbord. Speaking of powders that I put on today. So actually you're gonna be seeing this video first. I've been pre-filming nonstop, literally filmed almost every day I was in San Diego. So you're gonna be seeing some makeup videos like coming in November that I pre-filmed. Anyways, I tried out a bunch of Essence makeup. I'm updating on a couple here, but you'll see the rest coming in that video, which is kind of weird because some of them I'm trying for the first time that you'll be seeing in the future, but I'm reviewing it now. So just know after you watch that video, you can come back to see my thoughts, updated thoughts on some of them. But this is the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I've been really liking using my powder sponge to apply under eye powders if I want coverage. It can just like really take the coverage to the next level. So that's what I did today with this one. It is very soft and I like that it's not too tinted yellow. It has like a slight yellow tint. I like this. I don't think it's a bad powder, but for me, it doesn't give me as blurred of a look as my Essence Powder Foundation that I love underneath my eyes and on my face. That is like, whoa, really blurs things out. I think some people will really like this. I just feel like on my under eyes, which keep in mind are like weird and finicky, it's not my favorite favorite, but it's not bad. And it is an affordable option, but so is the Essence Powder Foundation. So now I'm thinking about just get the Essence Powder over this, try it on your under eyes. So the cream bronzer that I first used today, like I said, I ended up putting the rose ink one a little bit over top, but I did want to show you applying the Merit. So this is the Merit Clay Bronze Balm. This one, I think for the price overall, I would pass on because I just like the rosing formula better and I have other high-end products that I do like more. I love the Merit Kava Highlighting Balm. That is beautiful. But the bronzer stick to me, it is one that lifts up the product a little bit underneath and it actually is pretty glowy. For some reason, when I tried this in the last video, it didn't look as glowy, but it definitely gives your skin a significant glow. It is pretty sheer. I will say I like the tone of this one for a warm bronzer that's not too warm. I think some people might really like this. If you're someone who likes to throw on like maybe a tinted SPF and then a little cream bronzer and call it a day because it is more on the sheer side, it looks very natural and just like a subtle glow. For me, I have other cream bronzer formulas that I just prefer over this one. So I tried these blushes in that first impressions video. These are the Ciate Glow 2 blush. So I didn't realize that these are actually like the reformulated or re-released versions of their old glowy blushes that I used to love. But it's interesting because the shades are definitely like some of them are really different and less pigmented. Doll face tempt me. All the light shades in this I feel like are more of a highlighter. I don't have that much color payoff to be a blush. What I love is that these new ones, I do feel like are more of that glow from within look than their past ones. These are glowy, but like a really pretty subtle glow from within, not textured kind of glow. I have all of them from this launch. The only one that I love as a blush is the shade First Date because this is a pretty tone. It reminds me of Charlotte Tilbury blushes. There's just like something special about the tones of Charlotte Tilbury blush. And this has that kind of look to it. This shade is so pretty and I love the glowiness. This is a new release from Essence is their Lash Princess Liner. Again, I try it for the first time in that video that's coming in the future, but I've been using it since then. I put it on today. So basically the brown shade is trash. Do not buy the brown shade. This is getting really mixed reviews. It's 
averaging around like three out of five stars on different websites and I see why. It is probably one of the worst brown liners I've tried. It's a very light brown shade for being a liner, but then it also just like comes off. I did not think I was going to like the tip of this because it is friggin massive. Like this is not something that I was excited to try. It literally looks like a massive Sharpie, but the point on the end is actually pretty easy to get like a thin line with because it is firm. It's firm, but it doesn't do like the dragging thing that a lot of felt tips can do. Is it gonna be a liner that is like my new go-to? Definitely not. I still much prefer the NYX Epic Ink Liner. Skip the brown a thousand percent. Lip product that I've been loving is the Lawless Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. So this is gonna be my new go-to one that I throw into my travel bag. All of the Lawless lip products smell like cherry, but it's not an overwhelming cherry. And once you put it on your lips, I don't notice the cherry at all. I don't love fruity scents. I would way rather this be just like minty or vanilla. What I love about this is a, it's actually effective, like it keeps my lips moisturized, it makes my lips really soft. It does give you that really nice plump, light pink kind of look where you can tell some things on your lips and it like looks nice, you can wear this throughout the day. But what I really love is after a couple minutes, it gives you this like cooling sensation where it's not uncomfortable, it's not tingly, it's not that cinnamon tingle. Yeah, cooling sensation that I just look forward to putting on at night. It's relaxing, I like the feel of it. Powder highlighter that I put on today is the Essence Kissed by the Light Illuminating Powder. I don't think illuminating powder is like the right word for this. I would just call this a highlighter or as like a topper if you swirl all of them. But today I just went in with like the bottom one mostly, which is just like a straight up highlighter shade. And this is intense, a light gold, intense highlighter that you could totally use as eyeshadow. There's the shade swirled all together. This is a new Lancome mascara. I tried it in a past video. Every time I look at this, the packaging just really does something to me. I mean, it is beautiful. This is like heavy glass, just so pretty, but the mascara sucks. It's the Le 8 Hypnos Mascara. Does a whole lot of nothing. For the price, for being a high-end mascara, there's just no way I would like pay full price for this. It's very unfortunate. Can someone please launch a good mascara formula in a similar kind of bottle? This is one of the few remaining affordable palettes at the drugstore left, so I wanted to try it out. This is the Hard Candy Moods Monochromatic Shadows. They make a few different little quads like this. So for just like an everyday throw on affordable kind of palette, these three I like. The brown could be better. I'm wearing all these on my eyes right now. This one actually looks like it's gonna be like a champagne color, but on your eyes, it actually looks really close. Like I would dare to say almost an exact dupe for MAC Nylon. It looks very similar. As you can see, it pulls more like white and it almost has this like cool toned hue to it, which is how MAC Nylon is, while still having like a little champagne in there. So I think it looks really pretty as an inner corner highlight. And then this shade looks really pretty all over the lid. It does look different than it does in the pan. It looks like it's gonna be like a copper, but it almost pulls like a little bit cool tone on the eyes. And I like the sheen that this one gives, but it's around like five bucks. So after that, for the rest of the brown shadows, I went in with the Sweet Tart Double Shot Palette. This is a palette that I previously tried when it, whenever it came out a couple years ago, I think. The mattes in here are, are beautiful. One or two of the shimmers are good. The others are kind of flaky, but I do like the matte tones in here. So I added like a couple of those shades to my lower lash line, just kind of deepen up the crease and stuff because the brown in that Hard Candy Palette just wasn't quite doing it for me. This is the Makeup Forever Professional mascara, I think that's what it's called. So you get two sides on here. There's step one lift and then step two volume. So step one does a whole lot of nothing. It's like this tiny, I'm just remembering, did I put mascara on my lower lash line? Nope, totally forgot that. We're past that. <laughs> Meant to put this on my lower lash line actually, cause it does have like a nice tiny wand for that. This is the step one side. For me, this just doesn't grip my lashes enough. It really does barely anything. But the volume side is actually pretty nice. The volume side you can build up. When I do two to three coats with the volume side, I do get some pretty decent volume. But between basically not getting use out of one side of this product, because it is a high-end mascara, I wouldn't say like you need to go buy this because I just feel like the Essence Lash Princess mascara gives me similar volume and it's, you know, a few dollars. But I would consider repurchasing if they change the step one side to like a primer. Like if they did something like the MAC primer formula on this side, and then the volume formula on this side, that I think could be a winner. Okay, I wanted to mention these liners, lip liners by Makeup Forever, because I've tried a couple of these throughout the years since they re, I can't remember when they came out with this new like 
packaging. I feel like this is one of those formulas that's really popular. And when you're looking on Sephora, it's hard to tell the difference between like all the nudes. So I wanted to just include these and swatch these four shades for you since I have them and let you know the ones I've been really liking. So here's Up and Down Tan full scale rust. This is probably like the most popular shade they make wherever walnut, 600 anywhere caffeine. Let's blend it out so we can see like the undertone. So my top two are definitely anywhere caffeine and wherever walnut. These are like the most neutral cool tone leaning nudes out of all of these. These last really well. And the lip gloss that I put over top of that lip liner is the 10 porcelain petal by L'Oreal. I used to always use the lighter shade of this. This one's more of like that baby doll pink shade. The one thing is that it smells like friggin' rose, but the color's really pretty. I definitely have glosses that stay glossier for longer, but I do like the shade of this. Another foundation update for you. This is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. I have the shades 125W, which is too light when I have tanner on, but then 330N is too dark, so I usually end up just like mixing these two shades to create a shade that matches. I love the way this looks for the first like couple hours, but I feel like it massively oxidizes and usually ends up looking a bit too orange on my face throughout the day. And then I also feel by the end of the night, it's not one that I look at my face and think like, wow, my skin still looks really great and I feel like for the most part lately my skin has just been kind of like on the normal side because I've been using a lot of tinted moisturizers those just like hold up really well for me throughout the day but I would say it's about medium to full coverage depending on how you apply it and how much product you apply satin finish but it can look pretty glowy like if you have a glowy SPF underneath it definitely looks more glowy when you put this over top but i like that you can get like a true satin finish with this as well i just really don't like when foundations oxidize i don't not like this one i don't absolutely love it it's not gonna be like a holy grail but it's not bad okay this will definitely be in my next raise and rejects video i've been loving this it's the lawless hold up soft set creamy brow wax this is in the shade medium dark I love the shade of this. I feel like this is a really nice shade for me where it has the, the depth that I want, but it's not too dark. It's not like black. It has the perfect amount of pigment where it fills them in. It adds a little bit, it fluffs them up, but it doesn't block out my brows with color. It is what it says, soft set brow wax. Yeah, it feels soft and comfortable on my brows. Like I don't notice it on my brows, but it does hold them in place. Like the packaging, I like that it has a tiny applicator. I hate when brow products have massive wands and then you're just like getting half of it on your face. So if you're in need of a new brow gel, I really like this one. This was a total fail for me. I was really excited to try this because it's a tinted serum from the drugstore. I got this from Target. It's the Pacifica Kind Tint Tinted Serum Natural Coverage. I actually tried it in that vlog for the first time so you can also see me trying it. With the name Tinted Serum, I thought it was going to be more liquidy than it is. You can see like it's barely, I mean, it's going snail's pace down my hand. Usually a serum is like a much more liquidy product. For me, this one just clings to texture too much and it doesn't give me as much of like a healthy, glowy, natural kind of look that I would expect from a tinted serum product. This one is just more of like a light coverage foundation. Definitely skip this one. I'm gonna go take a washing hand break because I have like 5 million swatches on my body right now. <laughs> just sat down and now I need to replace the battery. Next up, we have the Say Concealer. This is the Hydra Beam Concealer. So the applicator on this drives me crazy. It feels like, to me, like a Dollar Tree concealer applicator. It's just very stiff and it's this like bizarre Christmas cone shape. Why? But the formula of this is really beautiful. It's like a creamy, illuminating, do agree with the name Hydra Beam. It does look glowy underneath your eyes and it is hydrating. I can set this one with certain powders, other powders, it doesn't look great set with, so it just really depends, but I do like this one with the Essence Powder. This one doesn't last as amazing on my under eyes, not set, as some of my other concealers that I use, not setting it. You guys, I'm at the point where today has already felt like it's been like 14 hours and it's um, 1.32 p.m. So I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. And I actually really like this one mixed with other concealers. Like I'll put on something like the one size concealer that's like more matte. And then if I wanna add that like healthy radiance underneath my eyes, I'll just put on like a little bit of this over top, let it sit on there. This one I do like to sit before I blend it out because it is very creamy and moisturizing. If you wanna get the best coverage, let it sit on there. You're not gonna get like full coverage with this. This is definitely more of a, I would say like medium coverage concealer, but it can look really pretty layered on top of other products. Just give you that like healthy, glow under there. The Super Goop Resetting Mineral Powder. So it's like a powder sunscreen. 
I talked in depth about these in that first impressions video and, you know, applied it and everything, but long story short, still have very similar thoughts. I like the formula of this powder. I just hate that you get such a small amount and I really don't like the packaging. I just think that Super Goop should come out with just like a loose or pressed, I would love a pressed powder, but an SPF powder that's just like in its own loose container. Because the formula of this is nice. It actually does some like nice minimal blurring. It's not something that I use a lot because of this stupid packaging. <laughs> and I get that it's supposed to be like, you know, quick on the go, sunscreen, whatever, but like it's just, it's not the reality. It's not how I'm using it. Okay, I have a hair product. I was so curious about this because we're getting pretty good ratings on Amazon. It's the Glaze Super Color Conditioning Gloss. I love tinted conditioners where you can just like deposit some color into your hair if you're someone who dyes your hair. Maybe don't dye your hair and you just want to create that like richness, like maybe you have brown hair, but you just want it to be like a little bit richer. This would be something nice to use in that case but it's semi-permanent, no damage, no mixing, no, m says no mess. We'll get into that. Lasts up to 10 washes and it gives you a shine. One thing I really liked is that this does like really give your hair this nice coating to it to where it feels very soft and it does add some nice richness. I've used this twice because this is not something that I would use like every time I wash my hair, just if I feel like my hair needs, you know, some richness to it and some color. But what I want to try is what this would look like if you apply it dry, just like a little bit on your roots. I'm like super curious if this would just quickly kind of touch up your roots a little bit. There's no ammonia, silicone, parabens, or sulfates, develops in 10 minutes. Yeah, I just basically put this on like as conditioner in the shower left it on for 10 minutes as I turned off the water shave did whatever and then rinsed it out and I was worried when I put this on I thought it was gonna stain my hands black it does fully rinse out and it actually fully rinses out of your shower even though it looks terrifying when you first rinse it out you don't have to like bleach your shower after at least I didn't it stained my nails a little bit so the second time I did this put gloves on because then you just don't have to worry about it. But I did really like this. Like initially, I do think it adds some nice color and conditioning and shine. So I did like this one. It's also very affordable for a product like this and you can get it on Amazon, so it's easy. This is the new MAC setting spray. I was so excited that they launched a new Fix Plus because Fix Plus has been like one of their core products for <laughs> literally I feel like forever. This is their Fix Plus Stay Over Alcohol-Free Long-Lasting Setting Spray. So this one is a totally different spray bottle than the other one. This does have really nice mister. It's like very fine. Oh, oh, just ate a little bit too much of that. Smells good. Smells like a MAC setting spray. Not that I love fragrance and skincare, but the MAC setting spray smell just does something nostalgic for me. I think this one is a little bit more glowy than Fix Plus. The thing I love about Fix Plus is that it really like melts the products into your face. And this one on today definitely adds a glow, but I don't feel like it does as good of a job with the melting of products. I don't know, I'm still leaning to the original over the Fix Plus stay over so far. As far as if it makes my makeup stay on longer, it's always hard to tell because basically in order to test that, you have to do half your face with, half without, you know, the exact same products on both sides. So I haven't done that kind of test yet. So I added a little bit on top of my 5 million products on my cheeks right now. I added a little bit of the Lawless Daisy Pink Blush. So this is just like a matte pink blush shade. I think you could a thousand percent pass on this. I just feel like for the price, you know, it is a higher end product and... There are a ton of lawless products I loved, but this blush just like fell a little bit short for me. There's nothing that stands out to me about this product. It is fully matte. That's one thing I like because sometimes I don't want a glowy blush, not super long lasting. I don't particularly like the shade any more than like other pinks I have. I feel like you could skip on this one. Last Essence product and then the rest will remain a mystery for that video, but this is the Essence Another Volume Mascara Just Better. Would have to disagree with the Just Better. <laughs> it is another volume mascara though. We'll give it that. It's actually not even a volume mascara. Like the formula of this is so wet that it is just really hard to get volume out of. Even when I let it really dry down and then go in for a second coat, I just don't get good volume with this. And the wand is the same size all the way around. Like there's no tapering to it. So that actually makes it like pretty difficult to get in your inner lashes and outer lashes because of that. The bigger wand isn't always better, you know? And sometimes I can get more volume out of a smaller comb wand, it just really depends. And this just really doesn't grip your lashes well enough to give it volume or to be able to build on top of it. The LA Girl Eyeshadow Palette Sunkissed Glow, I used this in the other video. I feel like LA Girl, they just make some of the most underrated eyeshadows. There are some incredible palettes from LA Girl. These shimmers, like, I just think a lot of these are comparable to like high end. Like this pink one. 
Oh my god. I just watched the lightest shimmer shade for you. Look at this. Beautiful. The mattes in here are like very rich and beautiful. There's one swipe of that brown. The deepest brown shade is like close to a black. I mean, it's like a nice, rich, very deep brown. And then here's the black, which I do have on my eyes right now. That's a pretty nice black. It does have a greenish tone. That's the one thing, like looking at it, it does have a greenish tone, but it's pretty good for being in a palette. A lot of the blacks are just like terrible. Love the matte shades in here. They're rich, they blend out easy. The one critique for me with this is that I don't love some of the orange shades in here. I wish they were like a little bit richer. And then on my skin tone, the copper just pulls like a little bit too orangey. And then last product, I'm trying this concealer for, I wanna say like a month and a half now. It's the REM concealer in the shade Light 7C. Love the tone of this pretty peachy tone. This is a different kind of formula than what I usually go for. It's lighter covers than I usually go for. It's very creamy, but the thing I like about this is that it does not crease badly on me. Whether I powder it, whether I don't, I can wear this one either way. And I do feel like it's just very flattering on the under eyes. It moisturizes my under eyes without settling into lines. I think if you have more creases or more mature skin, you might really like this one. It's not gonna be like, ultra full coverage. I would say it's closer to medium coverage. I like to blend it out with a brush, but I just always like the way my under eyes look when I wear this. That was a lot. Everything I talked about will be listed down below in the description box. And again, if you want to check out Necessary, you can get 10% off your entire order with the code WIN10. Everything I talked about will be listed down below. It smells so good. Let me know if you've tried any of these, if you agree, if you disagree. I'm always curious how products work for different people, so definitely let us know down below in the comments. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.